Hello everyone and welcome to this module of the introduction to continuum mechanics. So in this module we are going to discuss the introduction to the derivative of a tensor and some important concepts in the tensor calculus, gradient, divergence, curl, and Laplacian. So let's get started with the derivative of a tensor. And this is more or less quite similar to, uh, to the concept of the derivative, uh, the definition of derivative uh, during your undergraduate or you might incur this in, at high school. So uh, if you have, uh, let's say, a tensor field like T here, so, uh, and T is a function of, uh, let's say, a scalar field T, a small T, or we can call this, for example, M, so not to understood so this with the capital T. So uh, if we take this derivative with respect to M, then we're going to have the limit of T M plus delta M minus T M divided by delta M when delta M actually goes to zero. And this is the definition, uh, which is more or less you saw uh, before. And this has also some identities. Uh, so for example, if you have two tensors like D of uh, D, so T plus S, and you want to calculate this, uh, let's say, summation uh, with respect to M, but to calculate the derivative of this summation with respect to M, then uh, you will have something like D T with respect to M plus D S with respect to M. And of course, both are functions of M. So if you have, uh, uh, let's say, another, uh, uh, let's say, field like T alpha T, which is, which could be, for example, uh, I don't know, maybe uh not a scalar field because it is a function of t so a field for example and then sorry this is m and you want to calculate uh the derivative of alpha m times t with respect to uh dm then you you will have d alpha with respect to m times t plus alpha dt over d M. So the derivative of T with respect to M. And of course, remember that uh, this is uh, the same as, you know, uh, the things we had before. So uh, if you had the product of uh, two, two variables and they were like, you know, uh, for example, like Fx and Gx, and you wanted to calculate this with uh, the derivative of their product with respect to X. So you uh, you get something like d f of x over uh with respect to x g x plus then uh, you had f x d g of x divided by x d x or the derivative of g x with respect to d x with respect to x and this is more or less like this one uh so if you have uh two tensors like T and S, so their uh, product with respect to S, so uh, this becomes the derivative of T with respect to M times S plus T, D, uh, the derivative of S with respect to M. And then we have uh, something like D of, uh, let's say, uh, T A, A is a vector, for example, with respect to M, so we get something like uh, let's say dt with respect to m a plus t dA with respect to m. And if you have uh, d of t transpose with respect to m, for example, then you'll get something like dt dm. So the derivative of t with respect to m d uh, transpose. 
and this can be simply uh you know can be proved so for this um you you'll refer to uh page 45 so uh where you can simply uh use the same procedure which is followed in the book and uh, try to uh, just uh, extract all, uh, all, try to prove all these, you know, identities here. Uh, I prefer to uh, just uh, solve an example here from book. So the uh, example is example 2, 26, because it also uh, refers to uh, the previous, our previous knowledge of, of let's say, uh, the dual vectors. So uh, it says that uh, if you have a rotation tensor, RT, so we know that this is a rotation tensor, this has some properties, and uh, if we have a vector, a vector field, or as first order tensor like R0, this is transferred through the, uh, you know, RT. So uh, this is RT, R0. So R0 is transferred through the uh, rotation tensor to R vector. So it says that derive this equation, dr with respect to t is equal to uh, omega cross r here. So where omega is the dual vector, where omega is a dual vector and is equal to dr over, uh, sorry, uh, the derivative of r with respect to t times r transpose. So uh, we can assert from here, uh, basically from here, so we have, uh, let's say, R T is equal to R T R zero. So R zero is transferred through this rotational tensor to R. So if we take the derivative of R with respect to T, so we are going to have D R T with respect to T R zero plus rt dr0 with respect to t and this is basically zero because this is not uh, because r0 is not a function of t so it becomes zero and finally we get uh, this expression here uh, so from uh, let's say from one from here we can also uh, since this is a, R is a rotational tensor. So if R is equal to R R zero, so then we can have R transpose R is equal to R transpose R R zero. And this is nothing but the identity uh, tensor. So this is I R zero, which is equal to R zero. So for we have R zero equal to R transpose R. And I call this one. Maybe this is one and this is two. So if we substitute two in one, we get something like dr dt. I'm not going to rewrite this t here or maybe write it here. Uh, no, it's better not because we haven't read it this in here. So we have dr uh, with respect to t is equal to, so instead of writing this r0 here, so I have dr over dt r transpose r. And you see here that this is omega. Maybe it was too soon to write this. So it says that here, you have a tensor. This is a tensor. This is an anti-symmetric tensor. And uh, we already from the from uh, let's say dual vector analogy, we had if we have T A and T was an anti-symmetric tensor, so we could have written this as T A cross R. 
And since this is an anti-symmetric tensor, so uh, this is going to act like this T here. So it, it is going to be omega cross R here, where omega is uh, the dual vector of this. dr dt r transpose so next uh, we have the gradient so the concept of the gradient and also the gradient of a scalar field Because, uh, you know, we have to do this, for example, for, for uh, let's say, a vector field, for a tensor field. So uh, this can be utilized later in, in, in uh, developing uh, concepts, later concepts. So, so uh, we have a phi, which is a scalar field. And uh, this is a function of R. So that means that for each value of R, you get a value for phi. So for example, if this is a temperature field, so for example, for T, uh, for time equal to zero, you get a temperature, which is zero, for example. For point 0.1, this is S, and for example, this is degrees Celsius, uh, you get, for example, two degrees. For 0.3, you get five, and something like this. So what I mean by this, uh, by a scalar field, uh, it means this. So, uh, and we define uh, the, actually, the gradient like this. So uh, if we define the phi with respect to r so it is how this is changing how phi is changing with respect to r and i put r here because i wanted to show that phi is a function of r uh, and uh this is phi r plus dr minus phi r divided by dr and we basically show this by this nabla and then phi here. And we call this the, the del operator here. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the gradient of uh, scalar field phi. So this is the gradient, or maybe gradient of phi. We call this the gradient of phi. And this is also written in the form of the phi is equal to del phi dot dr. So it is dot product of the gradient. So uh, how phi is changing is the dot product of, uh, let's say, the gradient and the vector dr. So uh, let's suppose that uh, we divide both sides of this equation here with the magnitude of uh, dr so we have d phi divided by dr i show this uh, by these two uh, straight lines here these pipelines and then i have uh, del phi dot dr because we know that this is a vector so I wanted to distinguish between these two, the magnitude and the vector. So I have dr here. And this is nothing but the unit vector. So this shows that uh, if we want to know how uh, phi is changing over r, so we only need the dot product of uh, the gradient and its uh, unit vector. So, uh, you know, that phi could be a function of, let's say, x1, x2, and x3 here for, you know, because we assume we have a 3D uh, space. 
So if we differentiate this phi with respect to uh, x i, and I use here the partial differential because we have x1, x2, and x3, so I can determine uh, which variable I'm, uh, I'm differentiating with. So I'm going to have uh, del phi dot e i. So that means that if I have del phi, it is equal to partial derivative of phi with respect to x1 e1 plus partial derivative of uh, phi with respect to x2 e2 plus partial derivative of phi with respect to x3 3 e uh, let's say 3. Uh, so you see here that the gradient of a uh, scalar field is a vector field. So from a scalar field, we are moving to a vector field. So it is uh, it shows that we have uh, you know we are increasing in the order of of the field because we know that scalar fields there are zero order tensors. But a vector field is a first order tensor. So here we are increasing the order of the field by one. So when we uh, apply the gradient on a tensor field, whether it is a scalar, second order, third order or first order uh, tensor, we are increasing its order by one. So for example, if you have a vector field here and you apply the gradient operator here, or it's better to just apply it like this. So you will have a second order tensor. Uh, tensor field a second order tensor here. So if you have a second order tensor and you apply the gradient, you will have a third order tensor. All right. So the four, the gradient of a scalar field is a vector field. And we will do this uh, later in this video for a vector field and also for a tensor field. But uh, let's have a look on the geometrical, you know, meaning of this gradient. So what does it mean? Uh, what does it show? Because uh, you should also have a clear illustration of the gradient vector. It's better to say geometrical meaning of gradient. So basically, gradient uh, is uh, is a kind of vector which is perpendicular to the surface. So let's say that if you have uh, uh, if I can just, all right. So if you have, for example, a 2D domain here, this is X, for example, and this is Y, and you have a domain here. So the gradient is basically perpendicular to this domain. So for example, this is R of X and Y. Or if you have, for example, a 3D domain, this is X and Y, so this is the. So if you have a surface like this, and uh, you have this contour here on this, for example, the surface, and this is the direction of how this is actually changing, so how this is actually increasing. So if we want to know what is the gradient of this, so we, we simply just project this 
from up to here and it is increasing in this direction right so basically del phi is the direction of how this uh, this actually this contour is increasing so it's like the uh, the direction of the steepest ascent or as the book said uh del phi is maximum when it is when it, when dr is normal to the surface of constant so it is always uh if it is not zero del phi if it is not zero it is always perpendicular to uh to let's say uh to the surface so let's say that if you have for example this in 2d so del phi is a vector which is always perpendicular to this contour to this surface for example here so it is always uh um, I don't know how to show this. Uh, maybe a demonstration would be uh, good for this part. All right. So uh, I thought that maybe a demonstration would be useful here. So here I, I am using Maple. And uh, in this line, I'm restarting uh, everything. Uh, so I have uh, imported the plots because I, I want to have some plots. And here I use the vector calculus. So in this vector calculus uh, you can see the gradient here uh, so here I set my coordinate to Cartesian x and y and z and uh, it is not necessary for this but uh, maybe you want to try the polar or spherical or I don't know cylindrical coordinate so you can use this here uh, so I have my function f uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared here and uh, if I want to calculate the gradient of this f here, so uh, I have the gradient of f and I want to calculate it with respect to x, y and z here. So you can see that uh, I have, uh, you know, three uh, values for, for vector because this is a scalar field here and I have a vector field here. So this is 2x. So it is the same as the partial differentiation of f with respect to x, which is 2x partial differential of f with respect to y, which is 2y, partial differential of f with respect to z, which is 2z. And if I use the grad plot 3D and I plot this f uh, for this domain here, so you can see here that I have uh, this gradient, uh, you know, here. And as you see here, This uh, shows the uh, the direction ver uh, ver delphi is basically uh, perpendicular to each point here. So this could be uh, maybe better demonstrated here in two D. So I have uh, the three D plot of uh, x squared plus y squared for this domain here. So I have something like this. And as you see here, uh, this is the direction of the uh, steepest ascent. So it is increasing in this direction. And uh, if I plot these contours here, so if I just look at, uh, let's say, this uh, from the this uh, this viewpoint from the top, so I get something like this. So maybe I can show this by a contour plot. Pretty. So uh, if I look at this from the top view, I get something like this. So it is the same as this here, but here is the control plot. Uh, so you see here that uh, for this, uh, the, the, let's say that the gradient should be perpendicular to each of these you know, circles here, to each of these uh, contours here. So if I use the grad plots in 2D, of course, not 3D. So uh, I have my function here and I have my domain. And you can clearly see here that uh, these uh, arrows here, which show the direction uh, of uh, the gradient here, or the directional derivative, uh, they are, uh, let's say, uh, perpendicular to these contours here. 
and this is the geometrical meaning or if we look at uh, this here uh, if we plot this in 3d so you can see that the uh, let's say uh, the arrows should uh, point in this direction so they should all go up because it is increasing in this direction next topic is uh, the gradient of a vector field so to make life easier we have to uh, i have to uh mention something about the uh, you know the uh, different operators we're going to discuss in this module here like the gradient divergence curl and laplacian so uh first uh i described something about uh you know the concept the geometrical concept of the gradient uh but uh it was uh, and it was also mentioned for for the scalar field uh, so if we can define uh, this gradient, this nabla, in the form of the partial derivative of a quantity, whether it is a first order, zero order, second, uh, third, fourth order tensor, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x, i, e, i, and here between these two I put, uh, uh, let's say, a dyadic operator here. Uh, so, for example, for a scalar field, uh, it becomes um, del phi is equal to partial derivative of phi with respect to xi diad ei, where the book it is written as partial derivative of phi with respect to xi ei. So, because the book does not follow this, uh, you know, kind of notation here, so they put they do not put um, a dyadic operator here explicitly, but this means a dyadic operator so for a vector field uh for a scalar field uh then we have the vector field so uh del v where v is a vector field so i have uh this uh, v uh j e j here then i have this x i and dyad ei here because uh i have i as the dummy index so i cannot uh, use ii here vi ei so i have to uh, uh because i uh, simply violates the einstein summation uh convention so here uh i can say that this is the partial derivative of vj with respect to x i e j of dyad ei plus vj partial derivative of ej with respect to xi diad ei and here i can emphasize here that the partial derivative of this unit vector is uh, zero with respect to any kind of variable because uh, it is unity it is a scalar uh, it has a scalar value so this actually become a uh, partial derivative of uh, vj with respect to x xi ej diad ei and and uh, as you see here this is a tensor so if i want to complete this tensor here i can write it like this so if i say j is equal to 1 then i have partial derivative uh, v1 v2 oh, sorry v1 v1 because j is 1 and then i have e so this is 1 1 1 so i complete the first row here and the second uh let's say the second uh index here or subscri uh, subscript here is uh the for for the column so i is x1 x2 and this is x3 so this is e1 diad 1 this is e1 diad e2 and so on and so forth so then for j equal to 2 i have partial derivative of v uh, let's say 2 v2 v2 with respect to partial derivative of x1 
x2 and x3. And for j3, I have partial derivative of v3 with respect to x1, v3 with respect to x2, and v3 with respect to x3. Uh, All right. So uh, now, using uh, this uh, formulation here, we will be able to define the, to actually to derive the gradient of a tensor field. And here by a tensor field, I mean a second order tensor. So, uh, and uh, one thing you have to bear in mind is uh, something that I already discussed before. So the, gra the gradient actually increases the order of, of your your field. If it is a scalar field, it becomes a vector field. If it is a vector field, uh, it becomes a tensor. And if you have a second order tensor here, like tensor, something that we call tensor, becomes a third order tensor. We will say this uh, in a minute. So uh, the gradient of T, let's say T is a second order tensor. So it becomes T with respect to X, I, E, I, oh, sorry, forgot this triad, E, I. All right, so uh, this became, this becomes a J, K, uh, E, J, uh, dyad, E, K. And this is partial derivative of X, I, and I have dyad, E, I, perfect. So uh, if I write this like partial derivative of T, J, K, for the derivative of x i e j dyad e k dyad e i plus t j k partial derivative of oh sorry this okay nothing so this is t j k uh, partial derivative of e j respect to x i dyad e k dyad e i plus t j k e j uh, dyad partial derivative of e k uh, uh, with respect to x i dyad e i and uh, here we know that this value is zero basically and this is also zero therefore what we have here is partial derivative of t j k divided uh, sorry with respect to x i and uh, I have here E J, uh, sorry, J dyad E K dyad E I here, and this is a third order tensor. So we already see here that as second order tensor, actually it became a third order tensor. Next, we're going to uh, discuss the divergence. So for the uh, divergence, I try to use another color here. So the divergence of uh, a scalar field. All right, so uh, the divergence is, uh, so actually, it characterizes how something expands. Uh, you already learned uh, about this, uh, you know, this divergence in your undergraduate math. And uh, we also had a divergent theorem where we were able to uh, uh, just um, map everything from uh, surface into volume, uh, into volume and vice versa. So we were able to doing this, but uh, we will discuss this uh, in the last chapter, the divergence theorem. And, uh, but here uh, we're going to define, uh, we're going to uh, actually um, derive the equations of divergence for the, sorry, the divergence for the scalar, vector, and second order tensor. So we will be able to uh, just derive uh, to, to find uh, the relevant equations for the for higher order uh, answers. Uh, so something that you have to uh, know about is that the divergence of a scalar field does not exist. Why? Because when uh, when we have a divergence uh, of a scalar field, 
uh, basically uh, it is written it is uh, let's say written as the divergence of a vector field or something like this it's written as a trace of del v and uh, the tr and uh, uh, and as you see here the uh, order of uh, this vector v actually degraded to uh, a scalar field so uh, in divergence v bring down the order of uh, let's say uh, our tensor so if it is a scalar field uh, so it goes to something which is lower than uh, a scalar so it does not exist so it is zero uh, if you have a vector then you will have a scalar field if if you apply the divergence on a vector field so uh, you get a scalar field if you have a second order tensor you get a vector so always divergence degrade the order of uh, your field by one therefore the divergence of a scalar field does not exist so divergence of a scalar field does not exist so what about the divergence of a vector field so the divergence uh, is basically can, uh, is basically defined as uh, you know uh, for a vector field the divergence of v is equal uh, is equal to the trace of uh, you know del v but here uh, we can also use another uh, better uh, you know can, we can define another better uh, let's say uh, concept here so we can say that the divergence can be defined as del operator and dot del operator and dot something like this so i show it so um maybe you better understand it by using uh you know uh, by by writing the equations here so the divergence uh divergence of v it's better to say so you know that this is divergence del dot v is basically equal to partial derivative of uh, v with respect to x i dot e i and here uh, using the same analogy here we had uh you know the dyadic operator here but here we put dot instead of a diet so then we have this uh it's better to put this arrow here so we have vjej e, you know why i do this because we have i as a dummy index so again we can rewrite this as the partial derivative of vj respect to xi ej plus vj partial derivative of ej with respect to xi uh i guess that i forgot this ei here dot E I so I can shift these to left to right sorry <laughs> and then I have uh, let's say V J E partial derivative of E J with respect to X I dot E I perfect and uh, you know that this is zero so what we get is partial derivative of vj with respect to xi ej dot ei and this is nothing but delta ij right so this is vj xi delta ij so if i is equal to j then we have something like uh, partial derivative of vi vi with respect to xi and this is nothing but the trace of del v so it is the diagonal the trace of v 
of del V, sorry. So this is partial derivative of V1 with respect to X1, V2 plus V2, uh, partial derivative of V2 with respect to X2, partial derivative of uh, V3 with respect to X3. All right, let's go to the divergence of a tensor field or tensor simply so uh, the uh, divergence of t is delta t partial derivative of t respect to x i dot e i is equal to this is t j k e j diad e k and x i dot e i so using the same you know same operations here so we finally get uh, partial derivative of t j k with respect to x i e j diet e k dot e i so this become the k i this is t so k is equal to i j i x uh, let's say i e j at diet oh no no because we don't have any diet here because delta k i is one so it becomes this so this is a vector this became a scalar so you see here that the divergence of a vector field is basically a scalar and the divergence of the tensor field is a first order tensor or a vector field if you have second order tensor third order tensor you will get a second order tensor as a divergence field of third order tensor all right now let's get to the curl and in the curl So in the curl of a scalar field, uh, so basically curl means, uh, you know, how something changes, so changes direction. And in basically in, uh, in a scalar field, you don't have any change. So everything is constant. That's why we say that uh, there is no curl. So there is no curl in a scalar field so it is basically it does not exist or a is zero here but i would say it doesn't exist because it doesn't have any curl so it is always constant it doesn't change direction so let's get to uh the curl of a vector so the curl of a vector is a vector we'll see so uh the book actually uh, used this definition that the curl of V is two times its, uh, let's say, dual vector. But I would prefer to use uh, this curl V can be written, or curl, overall curl, can be written as del cross something. So del operator cross uh, your your uh, your tensor field actually gives you the curl let's see how this works so uh, if you have the curl of v basically we mean that we have del cross v so we have this operator here so it is v x i cross e i so this is v, v j e j partial derivative with respect to x i this is e i so again so if we expand this we get something like partial derivative of v j with respect to x i e j 
cross E I and you notice this is epsilon J I K E K partial derivative of, the, uh, of uh, V J with respect to X I epsilon I J K E K and you know oh sorry J I K And you know that you have i j k and now you're saying uh, j i k so it is just uh, moving in the opposite direction so this this is minus to uh let's say v j x i epsilon i j k e k minus and also you need to uh make some changes because now here you're swapping uh maybe before writing this it's better to to mention this that now if i want to write this in the form of epsilon i j k so uh then i have uh actually i am changing i'm swapping uh i with j so this become v i and this is x j and this means k but if i'm doing this with one swap so it's become minus all right so uh let's get to uh the next part which is the uh the divergence of a tensor field all right so uh del cross t or it's better to write di sorry uh curl of t curl of v yes true so del cross t is t partial derivative with respect to x i cross e i here and i have my t j k e j uh, dyad e k x i dyad uh, sorry cross e i here perfect so uh if we expand this here so we finally get partial derivative of t j k with respect to x i e i uh, sorry e j dyad e k cross e i and this k i uh, basically is can be written as k i for example m e m so this is uh, the partial derivative of j t j k uh, with respect to x i e j uh, epsilon k i m e j dyad e m so this is a tensor and this is a vector so you see here that the curl of a vector field is a vector and the divergence of uh, a tensor field is a tensor so actually curl does not change the let's say the order of the tensor so next we have uh, the Laplacian And here we define uh, this operator as del squared of something. So we say del dot del of something. So basically we can write this as second partial derivative of something with respect to xi, xi. So uh, the Laplacian, Laplacian of uh, scalar field uh, it can be defined uh, based on this uh, you know uh, this definition here. So if you have a del squared phi, so this can be written as del del phi. So del dot this del phi can be actually uh, written from here. So we just need to, for example, copy 
this to here. So this is also written as uh, the derivative of this with respect to xi of phi xi e i dot uh, so this can be written as i so this is already written here e i i so this is supposed to be something else whoops this is x j e j great so here we have second partial derivative of phi with respect to x i x j you can also write this as partial derivative of uh, x j and x i so it does not it, it doesn't imp so the order of differentiation does not matter it is not important at all uh so you have e i dot uh, e j so this is nothing but delta i j so this is the second partial derivative of phi respect to x i x i and shows that this is again a scalar value so the laplacian of a scalar is again a scalar field uh, so if 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 you want to expand this so this become a second partial derivative of phi with respect to x1 x1 or second uh, it's better to write it maybe this way second partial derivative of phi with respect to x1 plus second partial derivative of phi with respect to x2 plus second partial derivative of phi with respect to x3 all right so now let's get to uh the laplacian of uh a vector field of a vector field here so uh we have del to v here we have delta del v and we know that this is a tensor so del dot v so it is partial derivative of this x i we have uh let's say uh let me just bring it from here so we had the gradient of a vector and it's here so copy this paste here so you see here this is uh the gradient of a vector field here so i have i and j already here so maybe it's better to put it uh, to change this to k uh, dot e k so this is uh, equal to a uh, second partial derivative of vj with respect to xi and then xk and then we have ej diet ei dot ek this this is delta ik so i is equal to k second partial derivative of j with respect to x i x i because i is equal to k so i is, can be uh, k can be can be replaced with i and then we have e j so you see again we have a vector field here so the laplacian of a vector vector field is a vector lastly we have uh the divergence uh, sorry, the Laplacian of a tensor field. And if I just uh, bring the, the, the gradient of a tensor here, so this is the gradient of a tensor, it's a third order tensor. Oops. So I have uh, the del operator of a tensor, so it is del dot del t. So it is the partial derivative of, I paste it here, of this. 
So I already have J, K, and I occupied, so I use M. X, M dot E, M. So this become second partial derivative of T, J, K, respect to X, I, E, J, diet E, K, diet E, I dot E, M. And this is delta I, M. So I can be replaced by M or vice versa. Second partial derivative of j k t j k x i and I guess that I missed this is x i and this is x m for example. So uh, this can be also re m is replaced by i. So this is the second partial derivative of t j k with respect to x i x i. Uh, so finally I have e j diad uh diad uh e k